in minor species, cuniculture. The cuniculture is the art of raising rabbits, usually for their fur, meat, or wool. Rabbits, apart from their tender appearance, have a great soil technical, economical, and nutritional potential for man. In Colombia, the exploitation of this species is distributed in several areas, predominating the semi-technified and non-technicals. Currently, the biggest limitation the breeders are exposed is to the market derived from a very low consumption of their meat, due to lacking of advertising and eating habits of Colombians. Let's have a look at the cunicle activity which it doesn't require large tracts of ground or millions of extensions and it produces 100% usable products. Facilities When we talk about facilities for a productive unit of rabbits, we must take into account the agroecological zones, location regarding the position of the sun and prevailing winds of the area. For this unit we have our barn divided in two sections. One is related with growth and development of the rabbits, and the other one for reproduction. This barn must be in a north-south direction, so the sun for this climate comes in from the east, giving us heat all morning on the left side. In the afternoon, during the sunset, in the west it gives us the light source and heat on the right side. The units for the production of cuniculture must have heights according to the facilities of the zone we are located, can be made of concrete or specific materials of the zone itself. Here for example, we have a brick structure with an average height of 2 meters by 80 centimeters. And a gable roof, the ones on the sides have a wall from 50 to 70 centimeters high, and the rest of height are in wire mesh that are also covered by curtains to prevent strong currents of air. The curtains help us with air circulation inside the barn to evacuate ammonia the rabbit urine has. It's natural that if we deprive the rabbit from its habitat, we must please all its needs having in mind facilities and proper care. Here, these animals are in cages supported by a tubular system. These cages, where the reproductive females are, have a measure of 35 centimeters high, 45 centimeters long, and one meter and a half wide, considering that each one of them has three compartments, one for each animal. In these cages we can have an animal with its own system for food and water. For males, we have circular cages at the beginning of each module with a diameter of 65 square centimeters, a feeding system, and of course the mechanism for drinking water. These cages are supported to 80 centimeters from the pit or bed where manure is collected with a depth of 5 centimeters and a ramp of 3 or 5 percent. The burrowing the rabbits have in their cages are made of wood. That one is 35 centimeters wide, 15 centimeters in height as far as the door starts, and 25 centimeters long. On the back, it has an access for the female with a barrier of 4 centimeters to prevent the breeding to go out. Moreover, it has a door that facilitates the follow-up, evaluation and cleanliness of the small rabbits. Some breeds. In culture, we have rabbits of different sizes that can be large, medium, or small. This is an example of the breed Russo-Californiano, or Californian Russian, medium size, a meat producer, 
since it has a long loin and a firm leg. This is an example of the butterfly breed. This representative, or this prototype, is a producer of meat. The butterfly breed is characterized for presenting a pigmentation in the line of the backbone, tail, ears, and its face has stains from the nose until its eyes, forming a butterfly form that gives it the name of its breed. Cooney culture. We also have the production of hair that is characteristic of some breeds. In this case, we have a short and velvety hair of the breed Ress. These animals are dual purpose, to obtain from him hair, skin or fur, and meat. Although it's medium size, it gives us these marketing options. These breeds are characterized for having many colors and pigmentations on the back on its ears. These are the breed Chinchilla, that are also meat producers, but are mainly used for removing their fur. It is very exploited by the industry. This animal comes in different shades, from gray to brown. One of the characteristics that you see at a glance of this breed is its degraded hair, which is notorious when we blow on its back to see the circles that evidence it. Finally, we have the genetic basis of our farm, which is the white New Zealand breed. This is characterized for having a broad loin, a compact profile, totally white on its hair, and a difference that makes it unique the color of its eyes. The New Zealand White, its eyes will be red ruby. As in other breeds, this element varies from light red, ochre, intense brown, or even deep black. This is the end up product we have obtained in the farm. After crossing the New Zealand rabbit, with crosses of Californian Russian and Chinchilla. As we can see in this specimen, we have easily characteristics of each of the breeds. For the Californian Russian, we have the ears, nose pigmentation, legs and tail. For the New Zealand white, we have its size, the length of its loin, firm leg, and the color of its eyes, as it has been crossed with a chinchilla. It is not all dark, neither red, it is more or less reddish. We also have the color of its hair, which is degraded. This product has generated a similar profit as the New Zealand White. Feeding The feeding in rabbits is basically from special food or concentrated food that comes with a specific requirements for each of the production stages. The food we use in the farm is one specific type. has 18% of protein to meet the requirements of development and reproduction. The success for a good production of meat and fur depends on an efficient feeding plan that can include plants and well-balanced food. The use of good plants on a diet is essential for rabbits. In our farm, we supplement the diet with plants that are produced in the zone. We give this food to the animals after 5 p.m., 5 in the afternoon, to make it enough for night. The rabbit eating habits are much more pronounced in the evening hours or more peaceful. The water in colony culture 
should be as clean as possible. For our unit, we have a storage tank of 500 liters of water that is sorted from the treatment base of the farm. From this tank, the liquid is distributed to auxiliary tanks with a capacity of 20 liters each. Finally, they end up in the systems the animals have in their cage. The main tank is cleaned with a peel of chlorine to reduce the presence of microbes in the water. It's very important that rabbits always have water to reach. Most of the water consumption comes from the females in pregnancy or nursing their youngs, so it is required an optimal water treatment. Products such as chlorine or alum are very useful to make a potable liquid, ensuring proper sanitation conditions to the rest of the specimens. Cuniculture Reproduction The reproductive cycle of female rabbits lasts 46 days. The cycle begins with a beard on day zero. Here it begins a 35-day lactation. However, 10 or 15 days after giving birth, there is an option of a new service of the female. And in the period of a lactation, on day 35, the separation of the young is performed to proceed to the development stage. Between the separation of the young rabbits and the chance of a new birth, there is a period of 15 days that is used for giving some rest to the female. With this system, we obtain almost 8.5 births per year of each female. And this is the reproductive control of the unit. On it, it is described each reproductive event of females and males. The reproductive events are developed as follows. The mating on females is done when they are in heat, which is for 16 days, but we have the kindness that with our females here the mating can be done by induction. We start on day one. After verifying that the process was effective, we do a palpitation at a day 14, so we check the state of gestation of the female. If it is pregnant, it goes on this stage, but if there is no gestation, this female will go back with a male. After palpating, we continue with the preparation of the burrow from the day 24th to the day 26th. For the female rabbit to recognize it and is fit at the moment of the birth. Completing the gestation period that is between 28 and 32 days, it will give birth. It usually happens in the early morning hours or at night with no assistance required. From now on, the nursing starts in the burrow. During this period of 35 days that the nursing lasts, we do a follow-up on the young rabbits, 10 or 15 days after birth. You can use the female for a new mating to start a new gestation. When nursing is finished, we do the separation of the young from the mother rabbit removing also the burrow 10 days before the nursing ends. When doing the mating of the female, we verify its reproductive record to match it with the one of the male that corresponds for this reproduction process. We take the female by its back to carry it to the male. It's important to know that the female is always the one who visits the male in his cage because they are very territorial. Then we expect the male to stimulate the female in the circular cage. To prevent the female to go to the corners.
this exercise is done in the morning or in the afternoon after this process, we take the female back to its cage. And we proceed to register the event on its reproduction sheet. The temperature of the burrows must be set up between 30 and 35 Celsius degrees as the young rabbits are developing. The fur is compacted as well and the heat decreases. The rabbits open their eyes 10 or 12 days after birth. From the day 15, they start leaving the burrow to explore the outdoor environment and consuming special food. From that moment, we start seeing young rabbits of different ages of, for example, one day 12 days or 35 days that are ready to be separated from their mothers. Once the nursing period is finished, which is of 35 days, we proceed to separate the animals. First we locate the cage where we have to do this process. We verify their sex gender to take them to the development site. Cuniculture. For the separation of young rabbits and their mothers, we must have sufficient elements handy. A tattoo clamp, a set of templates for tattooing, tattoo ink, and a syringe. We proceed to make the separation depending on the sex. We apply some pressure on the genital organ towards the belly, and instead of seeing a circle, we see a V to make an individual weight for both sexes. 1,800 grams for this female, for example, young, are born with an average weight between 70 and 80 grams. Now, if we apply a pressure on the genital organ towards the belly, the genital organ appears, and in this case, two unbound concentric circles. This correspond to a male. It has a weight of 900 grams. Finally, this female has a weight of 900 grams. Then we get an average weight For the separation, we take the young We locate the ear in the middle part of the lobe There, where we don't touch any vein We do the drilling With the clamp and we immediately use the ink We remove the tattoo tweezer from its ear and we proceed to use the ink. Then we do the application of a purgative for the young. It will be immune for about 11 weeks. We finish the process taking them to the cages of development.
sanitation. Diseases when raising rabbits must be kept away because it is difficult to access a fast healing process for the animals. Keep in mind that a healthy rabbit has a good appetite, it is active, its hair is bright, and it has lively eyes and straight ears. Diseases are avoided with good management and care. A task of great importance in the production areas is the collection of waste, which are the ones used to prepare manure. Agro-industry Rabbit meat is rich in protein and low in fat. It is very appropriate to elaborate carnic products, such as sausages or burgers or even ham. It is a red meat coming from a mammal, but it's considered white for its good characteristics and proteins. A fact that favors the optimal consumption for elderly people or children as it is very healthy and very low in cholesterol. I invite you, Colony Culture friends, to truly exploit the potential of the rabbit, not only for the meat, but also for the hair, fur, and debris, or waste, which you use to develop manure for excellent characteristics. All these as a result of the application of good management practices within clean production. There are many advantages offered by this species, considering sanitation aspects, genetic, food, and facilities that allowed an adequate development of the exploitation. <laughs>